Hey everyone, today I'm going to attempt to answer the question, is this attack good? When we see an attack revealed, how can we immediately know whether it will see competitive play or not? I use a very simple formula. I take its stats, I add in the effects of the card, and then I subtract out the costs. So let's make this formula a little more complicated. What, how do I grade stats? I take the speed, I take the damage, I take any speed and damage given by the effects of the card, and then I add in stun. I multiply stun by 1.5 because I consider it stronger than speed. And then I divide by the real attack difficulty adjusted for effects. So I mean by that, like, take Hardened Jab, for example. It's a four difficulty attack, but it builds in the top card of your deck uh, as a ready face down, so I consider that a three difficulty attack. Take this number, and if it's above three, that's an A tier attack. If it's around two, that's C tier. Um, and if it's less than 1.75, it's terrible. So we expect all attacks to at least be C tier, meaning if it's a four difficulty attack, it should be a four speed, four damage. A great effects, A tier means great, B tier good, C tier fine, D tier means there's no effects to, to speak of. An A tier effect might be draw two cards, B tier draw one card, C tier you're just looking at the top card of your deck, but you're not drawing it. So how can we know whether an attack will see play? If it has both, if it has, if it has low to medium costs, and either its stats or its effects are A tier, it will see play. It doesn't matter about the other side of the card. Or if it has low to medium costs and it has both B tier stats and B tier effects, then it's just a great all around card and it'll see play. Assuming high costs, it has to have something in the A tier and something else in the B tier. It can't just be one or the other. It can't just be great stats and have high costs or a great effect and have high costs. You have to, you have to be a good all around card. Let's look at some current cards. Uh, Indiscriminate Shock. A tier level stats, effects, none to speak of because all the effects are I add into stats on this card. So, and then the very low cost to play, all in all, because it's low cost and it has A tier level stats, it's gonna see play. Low blow, we have horrible stats. Um, the only really effect that matters is the breaker two effect, which is um, not A tier in and of itself, but it's definitely B tier. So you have a B tier level effect, D tier level stats, it's not going to see play. Maybe in niche situations, but we could say that about any attack in this game. Dual Needle Lunge, terrible stats, great effect, A tier level effect. Goes to your, immediately upon resolution, it's going to go to your momentum and clear your card pool. And it'll do that for only losing three health, so any character can take advantage of that. So we love Dual Needle Lunge. Back Alley Haymaker, um, good stats, four mid for five with stun two. Good effects, build a zero diff or draw a card, we like that. It can be used in pretty much any character. Of course, this is gonna see play. What makes this card feel, I think this card is just fine from a balanced perspective. What makes it feel not fine is the fact that the zero difficulty foundations in set one are not balanced. The set two on zero difficulty foundations have this great balance. But in set one, uh, release should definitely not be a zero diff. Tight lip should not be a zero diff. It can't be fixed, should not be a zero diff. Uh, these are on, being on a zero diff makes these cards broken. And the fact that Back Alley Haymaker is on these symbols that can build in these broken foundations is what makes it feel so good. So it gets to this point to where it feels like either Back Alley Haymaker needs to be banned or all of these zero diffs from set one need to be banned. But they're <laughs> coexisting, they're too strong. Okay, that's enough about that. Blue Flame Spoiler, horrible stats, uh, just fine effect. It's not going to see play. Freezer Burn, it's basically a three difficulty attack. So it's got a great stat to difficulty ratio or, or B tier and the effect canceling anything. We love that. That's going to see play. Texas Smash, uh, all of it's, it's only about stats, right? But if you add in all its stats, it's basically a four high for 11. The costs are not nothing, but they're not high. Uh, you got a combo and you have to discard a card, but being a four high for 11 on a four diff, it's going to see play. Counter sweep in this new set. Um, it's got A tier level effects. We love draw two cards. We love powerful three and we're moving two rival cards, but the stats just don't hold it up and it's got high costs being a two check. It's not going to see play. Heroic Clash is an example of a card that has high costs, but will still see play because it has good stats for being a four diff. And it has an amazing effect of clearing your card pool, drawing two cards, being throw hate, and a perfect block. So this is an example of a card that definitely pays off the one check. Resolute Rushdown, C-level stats, B-level effect. It's not going to see play. Uh, Valiant Assault. It doesn't matter that it has terrible stats. It's a three myth for four. It has a, We love drawing two cards. 
and that's a very low cost comboing off of a punch when it feels like every single attack in this game is a punch. We love Valiant Assault. All right, and then we get this murky middle of cards that might be great in some characters, but not great in others. And that's because maybe the effect is great in a certain character, like like Electromagnetic Stomp, readying one asset. Well, that's great when you have assets, like like when you're playing May. Um, or maybe the costs are low in certain characters, whereas they're high in most. For example, Vindicating Smash um, has a A tier level effect of drawing two cards in your rival, discarding a card, but that's only if it's 15 damage or more. Well, that's a high cost in most characters, but in Deku 1, that's not a high cost. Uh, Deku 4, that's just having one momentum and then discarding a card from hand and you have it at 15. Or Muscular, if you have eight counters. Uh, so in some characters, that's not a high cost, but in most characters it is. So we get this murky middle in the My Hero card game where a lot of attacks could be good in certain characters, but they're not good in the majority of others. So with this in mind, Let's take the provisional store promo attacks that were just revealed yesterday and let's go in and grade them. So first we have Charge Shield Breaker. Uh, great stats, right? This can be A tier level stats. If they have 10 ready foundations that they just built and passed and you need a way to break down their wall, which is a great flavor win by the way for this card. If you need a way to break down their wall, this could easily be a 12 mid for seven. 19 divided by five is almost four. That's A tier level stats. Uh, effects, there's really nothing to speak of. You have Breaker 1, that's fine, but that's C tier. Its costs are just too high. So will it see play? Probably not. Um, it needed just a little something more. So so if it were a 3 check and it didn't have high costs, it would see play. Right, that's great stats. And all it needs is to be A tier in one thing if you have low to medium costs. But because it's high cost, it needs to also have a little something else. So if we took that Breaker 1 and we made a Breaker 2, I can see it seeing play. Or if we gave it some way to seal a rival foundation, like if you could seal their reset, so that way you don't play this 12 mid for seven and then they just flip their incursion trading partner and say, send it back down to four. If you had a way to seal that reset, like if you if it had a uh, response, commit one foundation, seal of one rival foundation, when you play this card, then I could see this finding play. But as it is, I think it's a little too costed. Maximum overhaul. So this one we have to separate out into non-overhaul and overhaul because it's got an overhaul related an overhaul only enhanced. So in non-overhaul characters, it's got A tier level stats, right? Seven low eight, if we use the enhance. Uh, the effects, I think pulling face down foundations, especially on the earth symbol into your hand is great because a lot of, a lot of those are gonna be attacks. So you're basically getting to selectively draw attacks, but it's got quite high costs. You're picking up your own foundations, which can hurt you on future turns. You, you the enhance, you have to have played a card from other than your hand. So the earth symbol is the best at picking up attacks as your foundations, but the evil symbol is gonna be the one best from playing from outside your hand. And so those don't really match. And then it's a five difficulty that wants to be played late in the string. So if you add in all of these together, it's a pretty heavily costed card. But then let's look at it from an overhaul perspective. We get to build a foundation from our hand ready. So really this is a four difficulty attack and overhaul. So that makes this an amazingly statted card. And then on the effects, we in overhaul, we also get to unflip a foundation because we got to pick up a face down committed foundation and then build it face up ready. And then for overhaul, it doesn't matter that it wants to be played late in a string. You're not going to be playing it on progressive difficulty. And then playing a card from other than your hand, that's very easy. So it's got low costs. So will see play in overhaul? This is absolutely insane. I think he wants to probably see at least two of this card. Outside of overhaul is probably a little too gated. Maybe Mr. Compress on evil. Um, one for all unleashed we have uh, terrible stats for a six diff five mid six and it's a one check so it's a heavy cost so let's see this effect it's got to be insane so it says once per enhanced step this is a card pool level response after you discard a card to pay a cost build the discarded card face down so that obviously is an insane effect and you can either say that's an insane effect or you can consider that to the stats you could say well if on average i'm building three cards because of this effect and like for example if you're playing deku 2 or tetsu tetsu and this is really easy cost to to make, you're always discarding cards. You could say, if, okay, if I build three on average, then this is really a five mid six on a three diff, and that's great stats. But now you have no effect to consider. So it's either a great effect or it's great stats. It's not both. So will it see play? No. Like maybe in Deku 2, 4, and Tetsu, but not really at a competitive level, even in those characters. It's just, it's it needs to be, because it's heavily costed, it needs to be A and B tier. So one way I think this could have seen play is if you said build the discarded card face down or face up, 
Um, now you're getting great stats because you can consider it like it's a three def and you're getting the effects of the foundations that you're building. And I think that would pay off the one check as it is right now. I don't think this card pays off the one check at all. I just think it's interesting. All right. Um, rescue counterattack. Uh, we got low B level stats, right? The enhance, you can get a little bit of extra damage, at least two from itself. Uh, maybe up to four, probably just the two. So you got B level stats, and then adding it back to your hand after blocking. Uh, that's a fine effect. It's nothing great. Um, costs are low. Will he play? No. Um, yeah, it's a uh, B tier level stats, C tier level effect. We don't like those cards. The other thing is, even though I don't think Shield Breaker or One for All Unleashed will see competitive play, I still think they're fun local level cards and their flavor wins. I don't like this card at all. Um, it feels like a Bubble Girl card, but Bubble Girl's not on the art. Instead, we have this really cool Mirio art with Saving Airy. And so I want a little bit more Airy flavor in here of the Rewind. I get you get a little bit of the Rewind when you block with it and then you add it back. But I, I, I want a little something more. I'm not sure if, you know, if they wanted to have a Bubble Girl attack that could sort of be in her catch, she needs to be in the art somewhere. Uh, I'm just not seeing this at all. So I think this card needs to be totally reworked in, in, in my opinion. Um, all right, final analysis. Oh, I skipped Bubble Girl, but because this video is all about attacks, but I don't think she's going to see play. I think maybe the second enhance shouldn't have had been given a commit cost, but then it's a little too boring. Uh, I just don't see this character at all finding play. All right, final analysis. Unless you play Overhaul, there's really no competitive reason to chase after these promos that were revealed yesterday. If you play Overhaul, of course you want maximum Overhaul, but you're probably just fine playing two of them. So if you play in two PSCs, you should get enough, or if you make top cuts, you'll get two, and you should be good. But this is how I consider attacks. As soon as they're revealed, I just go through the analysis in my head. Are those good stats? Are those good effects? And then what are the costs? Adding them all together, we'll know if it'll see competitive play. So I hope you found this interesting and that it helped. 